Yeah, we're celebrating 15 years this year. I know. This is yeah. congratulations. And number 15 on the podcast. It's like it's, dang, it's that's that all kismet. came together. That's why it's happening it destiny. right now. It's yeah, destiny. It, was, it just it just had to happen. It had to happen. It made it just made sense. Yeah. This is Bourbon Pursuit the official podcast of bourbon bringing to you the best in news reviews and interviews with people making the bourbon whiskey industry happen. And I'm one of your hosts, Kenny Coleman. Now, if you're like me, you probably paid too much attention to the bourbon market and you might be wondering if we finally hit peak bourbon bottles are everywhere and people are starting to flock to Kentucky in droves, trying to get a Napa Valley kind of experience. And Sean Higgins, he joins the show once again, to talk about the growth of tourism, and he should know. He started Mint Julep Tours back in 2008 after noticing a gap in tourism offerings surrounding the Bourbon Trail. At the time, Kentucky was not yet booming in tourism like it is today. But fast forward to 2023, and Bourbon tourism has now exploded, with Kentucky being a hotspot and a destination as it tops the Airbnb travel charts almost every week. Sean shares how his business has adapted and grown through the Bourbon boom, and really what the pandemic did for tourism in the state as well. We also touch on the changing demographic of visitors and where he sees innovation happening within the sector. With that, enjoy this week's episode. And now here's Fred Minnick with Above the Char. I'm Fred Minnick, and this is Above the Char. This week's idea comes from Raul Gonzalez, who writes me on Twitter. Why are some Dusties good and some are not? Oh, what a great question, Raul. In fact, I want to compliment you on this question because it's something that I have studied quite in depth and have a very recent experience that I want to share. It all goes back to the bottle. You got to understand that the bottle, in order to hold high alcohol for long periods of time, it's got to be a certain grade. It's got to be thick glass. It's got to be able to contain the fumes coming out of it, the pressure that the alcohol causes. And so you need good glass and you need to have a good closure. Now, closures is really where we see the faults happen. If you have a cork that is not properly fitted to a closure, which is a little hole on the top at the neck, then you will have a lot of evaporation it will not go over well over a long period of time. Now, the other thing is cork is actually part of an oak tree. So it comes from the bark of an oak tree, usually in Spain or Portugal, uh, some parts of Africa. For a period, there was uh, cork uh, in large amounts in, in the United States. There's still some in California, but I digress. And it was basically created for closures for alcohol. It was always created for wine. And they, they didn't treat or make sure that they had the right style of cork for spirits bottles. So you would have a, a wine-centric cork for spirits bottles up until really the late 1990s when they started taking spirits more seriously. And you need to make sure that there are fewer ways for things to evaporate. There's more pressure tests now. There's also a, a lot more taking out of it. They go through several treatments of cork, uh, meaning they boil it, they air pressure test it. A, a cork, depending on the value of the cork in terms of how much someone paid for it, they'll have up to 500 tests of it along the way from the moment that's, that's shaved off the tree to the time they put it in a bottle. So they go through a lot of testing today. But back in the old days, they did not. And so corks from, say, 1930 to 1975 could actually impart flavor. And so if you ever taste a note, a dusty note in an old whiskey, it's kind of like dank. It's like tasting like dirt or like a tree or something. That's actually caused by the cork because the cork can still impart flavor. So that's one style of closure that can cause problems. The screw cap will also have like, uh, you know, if you take a look at the inside of a screw cap, there's often like a little piece of wax paper that's glued on top of there. Well, that little glue can slough off inside the whiskey. So like the smaller bottles, the little minis that you would find on airplanes, 
those are always notoriously bad because of the of that glue inside that cap. Synthetic corks, there's not a really good sample of uh, synthetic corks in the old dusty market, so we don't really start seeing the widespread use of uh, synthetic cork until the 2000s, albeit you did have synthetic cork used prior to that. You just didn't see a lot of it. So I think in the next 10, 20 years, we will be able to know whether or not synthetic cork can keep for uh, what we consider dusty and good. But in general, some are good, some are bad because of that enclosure. Now, I want to share with you something. I, I've always said that Brown Foreman had the best dusties. Well, I learned why. They scrutinize every single aspect of the bottling line. And I remember when Brown Foreman was vehemently opposed to having uh, foolproof products, like they didn't have a foolproof product until about five, six years now, I think. And that was because they could never get the bottle just right because it takes a lot uh, to handle the pressure. At any rate, I was at a bottling line at Brown Foreman at Jack Daniels, and I watched bottling line workers remove about 30 bottles in the span of a minute, maybe two minutes. And I couldn't believe it. And there was like, I was like, why are they removing the bottles? Like the like the closure wasn't right. The There was an air bubble in the glass. I mean, they just, they put a lot of uh, care into that. At any rate, this is a very long above the char, and I'm definitely going to get scolded for it being too long. But it was too good of a question, Raul, to give you the standard three to five minutes. So I went long here. Thank you so much for that great question, Raul. If you'd like to be like Raul Gonzalez, hit me up on fredminnick.com, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Just look for my name. Uh, I used to say I'm the one with the blue check mark, but I don't pay for those. So not always the one with the blue check mark. At any rate, be safe out there. Remember, vodka sucks. Always find what you love at Total Wine and More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly and be 21. Play Whiskey Wednesday Round 11, The Memory Game. Until June 26, each week you can win one of our 12 incredible grand prizes. Select two doors at checkout. And if they match on drawing night, you'll win that bottle. Not a match? No worries. You still score a Weller 12-year. Every $5 ticket gives you five chances to win, including four weekly bonus prizes. Get your tickets now at give270.org. Charitable Gaming License ORG 0002703. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof. And the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or TheBourbonConcierge.com and you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea, warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 a cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky, and you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to NoseYourBourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of Burn Pursuit coming at you. Kenny and Ryan here today talking with a past guest. An not OG, just, OG guest. An OG guest. This is like, you're right, it's it's an original guest. It was a it was a first 15 guest, and I think that's the fun part about well, it. And he, he could have made the first 10, but he forgot <laughs> no, to re- we, we forgot to record one time, so he had to come back and record. Uh, uh, it goes into the, the ultimate bourbon pursuit fumbles category yeah. of, of what we've done wrong in this podcast over the years is that we, we we show up, we set the computer up, we get the microphones. And why I would say microphone, we're literally huddle around a single microphone. Yeah, I had, a, I had a shitty MacBook that I brought with this USB shitty microphone. Yeah. But, uh, those were the glory days. It was the glory. And we, we, we had a great conversation, probably lasted a good 30 minutes. And we left and we go, and Ryan goes, Kenny, we, we didn't hit the record button. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, man. Thankfully, we have got um, a lot of, I guess you'd say- Now fail- we have a big red button. In yeah, we got, we got a bunch of fail stops nowadays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got a bunch of guardrails to make sure- that, And that, like, not even that is our equipment actually, not only just record, but it actually records to another backup as we're recording. So it's like, we can't, we can't fail anymore. It's idiot proof, we think. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but really, the, today's conversation is is because our, our guest, he was back on episode 15, but- we've seen his business explode and it's all because of bourbon tourism. Yep. And so when I was trying to figure out, I started to think like, where is bourbon tourism going? Because today, if you're coming to Kentucky, the KDA has put out a lot of stuff that says you need to come and you need to be planning well ahead in advance. You'd be planning months in advance and booking your tours and everything is just, it gets gobbled up about two or three weeks before you would ever show up. There's just no tours available. Two to three weeks. It's like months now. It, it <laughs> might be. And I think we would just kind of look at it and we go, gosh, is is this sustainable? How much longer is it going to go? Are people going to get frustrated when they come to town and they can't even do anything? And so I, I thought our guest is going to be a, a great person to be able to do that because he's seen his business grow on the tourism side and we'll be able to kind of relay that and kind of intersect those those dialogues. Yeah, my, <laughs> I'm thinking back to that episode and my favorite thing was when Sean, he was like talking about the KDA was coming up with this bourbon trail concept and this and that. I think he was talking to like Barry Yonke or something at the time. And they're like, he was like, Barry, how are these people going to go from these distilleries, you know, that are sometimes 50 miles apart from each other. And they're like, we're going to give them a map. <laughs> and he's like, ding, ding, ding. Here we go. So that, I always, I always remember you, that. You, you always default back to that one. That's, yeah. that is a good yeah. one. So today on the show, our returning guest is Sean Higgins. He is the chief fun officer at Mint Julep Tours. So Sean, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. And all great questions. Can't wait to get to them. But I have to tell the listener out there one thing is when these two guys. Oh, hold uh, on. We, we, we didn't hit record. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was I'm like, no kidding. way. <laughs> bumbling. They said the word bumbling earlier. And that's the one that comes to mind because they came into our offices and it was so enjoyable to watch. And they brought technology and microphones and laptops and left after about two hours of fun and a couple of cocktails and then called me back within about 30 minutes and said, uh, by the way, we forgot to record we, we do it all the over. session. <laughs> Can we come back tomorrow? <laughs> anyway, and delighted to be back. And, and great memory because Barry was the one. I mean, when we first got started, it was all about safety and safe rides. And so when they pitched this idea of the bourbon trail concept and promoting it and building the brand and marketing it, my first question was, how are we going to get all these people around Kentucky, including Makers Mark and Woodford and others that are tough to get to with GPS and do so safely? So thanks for having me back. Oh, absolutely. Oh, to see you. And so let's give people a primer because I'm sure if you're a longtime listener, you might have listened back to episode 15. But if you're relatively new to this and you don't want to listen to, I would say, subpar audio uh, just because of technology. Uh, so kind of give people a little bit of background of Mint Julep, how you got started, how you got into the business. Yeah. So um, and by the way, thanks for this this rye, this bourbon pursuit rye I hadn't tried before. And I was honest with these guys and it turns out it's delicious. So thank you for that. Uh, pursuit oh, yeah. United rye. It's our, it's yeah. our baby. Put it, so, you know, at the time, every guest on your, yeah, can we put it on every, every <laughs> pursuit, or every, every mint julep shuttle? We'll just go ahead and have a bottle of yeah, pursuit United right. rye. We'll do it. A, a UPC code yeah, right there. Right. Order on your will. <laughs> 
So we started, uh, Lisa and I, we had three young kids. I was in technology looking for another passion, another pursuit. Bourbon was always there. Barry and others in the industry were all good friends. And when they started to spin this bourbon trail up, I really looked at it from a different angle. And that was really, um, you know, responsibility and safety and and, uh, experience. Because what we all loved about it is not just going and tasting the the whiskey and the juice itself, but also the environment and the uh, the experience of the properties that they have and they own and they operate and and what they yield from those. So we thought it'd be a great business model to take people. And as it turns out, it it, it was it was the right thing to do. We were a little early in the game, but uh, the brands adopted us so that uh, they knew we were going to bring guests to them safely. So they provided us the opportunity to bring some of their distributors, sales teams, and others to the campus. So. It was a win-win for everybody. So when you say adopted early, what, what do you what do you make you what makes you think that you were adopting too early? Because it seems like you were. It seemed like right timing, in my opinion. Quite honestly, um, and Bill Samuels will tell you we're the shoelaces on the shoe. So we tie it all together. And back in the day, there was only eight lace or eight eyelets <laughs> on the shoe, right? And so there wasn't a tremendous amount of demand, and with them not really taking a look at us and seeing the services that we were going to provide over time, we would have never made it without their business of bringing their clients and their guests and their VIPs and their barrel selections to town for them. So the first, quite honestly, the first two or three years, 2008, nine and 10, if you think about it, it was financially a really catastrophic market for a lot of people in the real estate industry. And in the, at the time, they came and said, can you move our people around safely? And we did. So that kept us going for the first two or three years. Yeah. And that when you say move our people around safely, that's the, the sales teams or is that between? Sales teams, okay. uh, distributors, guests, VIPs, barrel selection customers, those kind of people. Yeah. And and I felt like you, know, you said it was tough. I, it just seems so weird because I look at it and I'm like, ah, oh, he timed it perfectly. Yeah. But it yeah, all makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It all, it all, it all makes sense. But I guess there, there is a, there is a growing pain period of, of our, is this, startup. is this going to yeah. grow? And, and so even back then, is it just because the community or the, the customer wasn't demanding it? Is, is that what you saw the problem? We had the, uh, back in that day, it was the, the true fan, the two, true believer, the true lover of bourbon and whiskey and uh, bringing back, that back to market, right? If we think about it now, in the post-COVID world, we built our company way back in 2008 for a post-COVID world because they're looking for small group travel. They're looking for intimacy. They're looking for authentic experiences. They're looking for, you know, what can we do special? What can we do behind the ropes? And we started that back in 2008. And back in the day, it was the three of us plus maybe a dozen others that really loved to go to the distilleries on a weekly basis and taste and and experience what they've got to offer as their seasons produce different product. And it's only been, I'd say, in the last five or six years where people have really, that, that market share has really exploded as the uh, advent of bourbon has become a reality in so many areas of the country now in the world that now they're coming from all over the world. Yeah, it used to be just like a extreme whiskey geek or whiskey fan would go tour the facility, but now it's starting to, I don't know that it's necessarily hit mainstream yet. It's still like people very interested in bourbon, but, you know, maybe a, a wife or a spouse or, you know, this is that tags along with them and then they catch and, and it's, so it's like, it still feels like it's very like, uh, they, they tag along uh, or being dragged well, <laughs> drug, probably, yeah. drug. <laughs> drug when on the way there, but then when they get there, it's tag along because yeah. they're like, Oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah. You know? So, well, you know, what's interesting to a statistic that just came out was uh, that the biggest growth in the Kentucky bourbon trail is the 40, 41 plus marketplace. And of that marketplace, 60 plus is growing the fastest. Interesting. So people in a demographic that I'm in are looking for experiences and adventures that are memorable and resonate and and really part of their bucket lists, right? Because now's the time to go if they could ever go. And that's the market that's really growing quickly on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail and, and, and bourbon in general. Well, the distilleries really have embraced that too. Like in 2008, you know, to probably 2015, I mean, 
to me, the visitor experiences weren't like even that good, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just to be quite frank. I mean, uh, you, you know, said it, that. It, it really took but, Bardstown yeah. Bourbon Company to me to like kind of push the envelope of like, all right, we're going to turn this into, and then you saw, you know, Willett and Heaven Hill and all the makers, all them follow suit, Woodford, obviously. And it's really like, I think the distillery is embracing that and catering to that even more has really kind of, I guess, catapulted that side of the the industry as well no question they wanted to adopt i mean uh, if you think about it the the brand innovation is incredible out there with with all of those brands but the consumer facing or the guest experience at the distilleries was lacking early on so that's where a lot of the innovation is now happening between restaurants on campus uh, betting on campus uh, music on campus, all of these things that create a better environment from an experiential standpoint, they're all going in that direction. There's only a few that can carry that that bucket for the long term, mm-hmm. but there's a lot going into that market now. Sure. And it and it makes sense now, but you like look at, you know, we ha- we're within five to six hours of so many major metropolitan cities, you know, and like it's something that a potential customer could look at coming to Kentucky in the Bourbon Trail and it's pretty affordable you know the cost of doing it is not that crazy expensive you know you can drive here and we have great food hospitality transportation now it's like it makes it really like a cohesive like package that is like this makes sense now i you always know? said that if like you put a, a pencil in the or like a pin in the middle of kentucky and you took a pencil and you did like a 200 mile radius outside of it like what major metropolitan cities do you hit and you hit a, a lot of them you hit chicago you hit nashville you hit indianapolis oh yeah indianapolis cincinnati, cincinnati. i mean yeah there's there's a ton of places yeah you know what's interesting is florida took over tennessee as the large as one of the largest demographics moving in or coming in for the kentucky bourbon trail Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, probably because so, so many people moved to interesting, yeah. Florida. 70% of the country is within a day's drive of Louisville, which is one big mark, right? And that helps quite a bit. And then when you take a look at the demographics of the South, and from an international perspective, Nashville is growing exponentially in the international market. Well, guess what? When they get to Nashville, they realize they're only a couple hours from the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. So how do we get people up to the Kentucky Bourbon Trail from from Nashville? And that's what we've been putting time and effort into figuring that component out as well, because they do want to come see Barstown Bourbon Company, Maker's Mark, Heaven Hill, uh, Willett, and do it in a day trip. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Nashville, but I, I don't I don't need to go back to Broadway anytime soon. <laughs> Dude, get on a oh my tractor, you know, a tractor pull or whatever <laughs> on Broadway. Yeah. Uh, better. I mean, we we have our own. Well, it's funny you bring that up. You know, with Nashville, it's like kind of like the it kind of turned into like that bachelor bat- bachelorette kind of party. Bachelor, but more and more, we see more bachelor parties coming to the Bourbon Trail. You know, have you seen that in your all's? You know, so we have. But you know, uh, fortunately for us, we we built an experiential opportunity for those at a higher dem- higher end price point sure. that uh the second wedding or second marriage that bachelor party has become, that, that become a very popular one with us i actually kind of like that one <laughs> like it's not the <laughs> yeah. first one but you know the second yeah, one I'll actually kind of makes sense but especially when you're talking about the demographic of people coming in that that definitely makes sense but even yourself like your business like you have seen You've seen the growth of this happen. I mean, I remember when we first started, now you have not only just grown your fleet of vehicles much larger than what it was back in 2015 when we originally first talked and had you on on the show, but you've also expanded to Nashville. You've also expanded to the point where you have helicopters, like like doing stuff like that. So kind of talk about A, why venture to Nashville, and then B, also look at creating something that's like very exclusive or very kind of, I don't know, bougie maybe is the best way to kind of look at it when you talk about helicopters. Yeah. I hate that word bougie, but you're right. (laughs) I mean, that's where we've leaned in. So we've realized after all this time that we're able to create some customized experience to get people back behind the ropes, either it be by relationships or knowledge or uh, years of tenure, for example. So we're focused at the luxury leisure traveler, Because that's the market that really is coming uh, to an awareness that certain things are possible, like helicopter transportation to go to Jack Daniels or or to go to Maker's Mark. Yeah, I mean, that's that's nice. Uh, Yeah, I mean, that's 
but to be honest, I would rather take a chopper to get to Jack Daniels now if I had if I had the opportunity, <laughs> especially from here. It's a four and a half hour drive. Yeah. For, but but it's taken a long time to get there to sure. understand the complexities. You mentioned it earlier. Trying to create an itinerary for yourself and come to the Kentucky Bourbon Trail for three or four days and curate it on your own, including hotels and reservations and dinner reservations and distillery reservations that all line up. That, that's a Tetris that's tough for anybody to deal with. So as long as the complexity is there for those guests that are looking to do things, then we've got 11 experienced coordinators now that are just dedicated to fulfilling your dreams of what you want to experience while you're here. And so it's really that curation part of it that we provide the value to. And, uh, and that's why the guests are, you know, excited by what we're doing. And well, yeah. And I think you're an advantage too, because like a lot of the distilleries and experiences are still kind of rural environments. And so you can't just like get Ubers or, you know, this or that anywhere. It's a, it's like you said, it's a complex. uh, Yeah. How many times have we gotten phone, phone calls or text messages be like, I got a, I got abandoned in Bardstown (laughs) because they can always get an Uber there. They just can't get get one back. back. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. It's just having a ton. Yeah. (laughs) Whereas it's like, just schedule one with Mendula Tours. Yes. Just take care of everything. We'll do it all. We do it all, y'all. So talk about, you know, early on, I think the model was more like, you know, groups and, you know, but it seems like too, that people don't want, not that they don't want to be involved in groups, but they like more intimate. So how, how is like, I guess the black car, you know, just, you know, where you're taking just like an individual group, has that grown uh, more than the group side things or where, where do you see, I guess it trending? It has, but you know, a lot of that twos and fours leaned into the corporate transportation and, and, and corporate groups or really close friends or two couples where we see a real big uh, growth is between the groups of six and 12 and larger groups. So we'll get a group of buddies that have graduated college or are all dentists in Detroit, for example. We do a lot of business with the Chicago police force. Okay. Believe it or not, because early on we did the whiskey something or other up in Chicago. We got a, a cop that was interested in coming down for a tour. He brought his group. And next next thing you know, everybody's coming down from the Chicago police force uh, going out on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Gotta love it. Oh, we gotta love it. Yeah, it's definitely lean towards intimacy, right? But intimacy yeah. isn't no longer two or four people as much as it in our space of six to 12, gotcha. for example. And um, and even the larger groups, you know, groups of 20 and 30 that are coming in town for these types of things. The good thing about the distillery landscape today is they're able to, to move a little bit outside of the COVID model in that 12 or 14 is the maximum and get creative on how to, to deal with and manage larger groups again. And that's taken a transition as well as a, a, a labor issue down at the distilleries to make sure that they've got enough people on the service front to be able to, to support that many travelers. So that's that's been a big change for us recently to be able to do more of that business as well. And I hope I don't bring up bad memories, but when we think about what COVID did, can you just explain and give people an understanding of like, what kind of toll did that have on your business when, when that was all happening? Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point of sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point-of-sale system, or use Shopify's point-of-sale Go Mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase. And go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today, shopify.com slash bourbon. If you're anything like me, 
then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon, the farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. When we think about what COVID did, can you just explain and give people an understanding of like, what kind of toll did that have on your business when, when that was all happening? Um, you know, we went from 68 employees to six in the course of about 60 days. Wow. And, um, you know, building a great company once is a joy. Having to build it twice is still a joy but it's a little bit more challenging. And that period of time for us was, Lisa and I had put all of our time, effort, talent, and funding into a business that we thought we could build for a family and build for a lifetime. And to have that shut down was tough. But you know what? The, the best thing that could have ever happened to us as a company was COVID. And I say that because the employees that came back, the culture that we built, the distilleries that supported us, uh, the people that were around us and the energy from those people that came back to work for us really created an environment that you could never dream about building again. And for us, that was special. And so now I think the reason we're flourishing is because our employees are truly making dreams come true for the people that are coming to visit the Kentucky Bourbon Trail as if they were their own family. And for all of those reasons, as well as the just pure passion and joy to show off what we've done and who we are and why we do it has been paramount to us, to our willingness to put in the energy every single day, seven days a week, like you guys do, to make this happen for everybody, right? Tourism and what you do isn't an easy job because it, it takes up nights and weekends and uh, for those reasons, it's uh, a challenge to any family. But to having gone through that and come on this side of it, it's it's a special joy that we live every day now being able to do what we do. It's always good to have your cheerleaders that are on your side for it. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's what's special about this industry, too, is like they'll, they'll get everybody, lift everybody up and, you know, these those times and whatnot. Can you talk about like, because before COVID, it seemed like, you know, the trail and downtown was just like humming, you know, and then COVID happened, obviously. 2021 was kind of a little bit of a slight build back, but was, talk about 2022. Like, was it, are we back to like 2019? Have we exceeded? How, how like, what yeah, is we We have, we grew 57% from 2019 to 2022 and 21 to 22 was a huge break for us. And I think the distilleries are experiencing the same thing. The challenge for them is their vision has has outpaced a little bit their ability to execute at the restaurant level or at the uh, housing level and those kind of things. So just like any other restaurant, I think 62% of restaurants these days are still facing a shortage of staff to be able to accommodate the demand. And the distilleries are no different than that. And so they're challenged by the same challenges that the rest of the industry are is staffing to a service level that they can accept and their guests will accept. And so as they build towards those things, then we'll be able to grow this thing a little bit further. But right now it's it's constrained to the point that they want the best service level to their guests in front of them. And that's what those guests are getting today. But in order to expand that further, they need some more labor. Yeah, because most restaurants on the trail now are only lunch only to like early dinner, right? Yep. Five or six p.m. is yeah. like cutoff. Yeah. 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 Which that's that's tough when you you're you got to plan around that because you're like, okay, I would love to tour all day or grab lunch somewhere, then tour, then eat dinner somewhere. You know, whereas now you can't kind of like plan that way. It's kind of so you kind of have to like shift your yeah. mindset. You know, continue to disrupt, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Everybody's working hard. So 57%, I mean, that's pretty insane. Like, 
Like, are y'all looking at 22? Like, that's this is kind of anomaly, or is this like going to be the norm? Is it or, sustainable, or, or is, is it sustainable? Can we see, you know, we see more growth. I, I, th- I think we're going to see a lot more growth. I, I think it's going to be unique and partitioned a little bit different than it used to be. I mean, the distilleries aren't the turnstile distilleries that they they were or leading into 2019 and 2020. Are they trying to create more curated experiences, more things that are individual, unique, that, as you said, it's not turnstile. It's not like, no, it's all right, what, hop on, what, grab your ticket, and there's your ride, and yeah. I'll exit your way through the gift shop. What's the cost of a brand ambassador, right? So everybody <laughs> needs the brand ambassadorship, and that's why these guest experiences were first created for those that of us that love the brand and want to come visit that brand personally and uh, I adopt and identify with that brand, then we would go there, right? Now the masses are coming, and is the same intent there? I don't know. And so as you get to that discussion of what's the cost of an ambas- ambassador, Forgive me, they're pouring bourbon down my throat here too today, so I'm a little <laughs> bit. Uh, <laughs> I told them we're gonna loop him up, yeah, yeah. Down here. looping me up. Yeah. Um, but as as we head in that direction, then it's it's really a matter of what's the cost of the ambassador, right? And so, if you take a look at the best guest experiences out front all the time, you want to be able to provide the services behind that as well. So they're at that point now, but for a limited amount of guests per day. So as they can expand that labor force and build out that that support, then they can handle more guest experiences per day. Yeah, no, it, it makes sense, and it's just I mean we've seen the we've seen the growth of of bourbon happen. We've seen the growth of bourbon tourism happen, and I, I kind of want to I'll toss some softballs out there is is just kind of see like because you had mentioned a stat about earlier about how the demographic is changing and where it's actually an older demographic that's coming. I mean, is that is that a post COVID thing? Is that a pre COVID thing? Like, kind of, kind of talk about like how, like, what are the types of people coming? Like, what are the, what are the, what are the stats look like of of just the the, the demographic of folks showing up now? I, I think you know, and I can speak to that older demographic. I would love to start knocking off some things on my bucket list quicker and faster than I'd ever thought before COVID. Right, my my new son in law is in Matterhorn in Switzerland. I would love to go to Matterhorn yeah. and see Matterhorn and ski Matter, Matterhorn in Switzerland. So Take me with you. I don't, yeah, even, think my, I don't even think my knees can handle and it. I, I, even I even even be, at my age, I'm like, ah, I don't know about that. COVID causes uh, I'll see a couple it from the, of I'll things. I'll see from the chopper. Yeah. <laughs> early <laughs> retirement. COVID drove a lot of early retirement and, and a lot of early investment, uh, you know, back on the sidelines. So people that have the wherewithal and the time and the age to do so, they're they're taking experiences that they've never taken before and doing them in ways that are unique or different than were ever, ever oper- offered before. So like the helicopter experience to a maker's mark to do a private barrel selection, that was unheard of five years ago, 10 years ago, certainly, but f- at least two or three years ago. And so now you can make that available to somebody for the first time and they want to leave that history with their sons well then what better way to celebrate your 62nd birthday at bobo or what's his name miss mary bobo miss mary, mary bobo, bobo. Is that a helicopter ride at mary bobo yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of mac and cheese you gotta eat to get there <laughs> yeah I, I want a helicopter ride out of there <laughs> <laughs> i would love eating at mary bobo's every day yeah, oh yeah it is, it is good. Good. Oh, it's a day ender though. I remember we went. It was we had a what, it was like a, a Thanksgiving in June is the thing we had when we went there or something. Oh like yeah, that. I was so bloated coming out of there. They're like <laughs> dressing hey, gravy. Yeah, and like, you gotta go drink whiskey after. I was like, oh, we can't fit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Oh yeah. yeah. What the? I'm I'm curious, like, um, because I'm sure you're doing like some surveys or getting feedback from people coming. What are I guess what are some of the positive things and also what are some people saying like I wish they would do this or embrace that or, the, you know, is there any, do you have any feedback in that? You know, as a whole, I guess the Kentucky bourbon trail you're talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. Not Mary Bobo's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the food component is a challenge sometimes because the volume is such that, uh, you know, on any given weekend we'll have 40 or anywhere from 40 to 60 groups out. And so if they go South or they go East, it doesn't matter. We've still got, three or 400 mouths to feed during that period of time. So food is certainly a component that could continue to be enhanced over, over time. And um, I think the distilleries, it's just a matter of supporting them 
in the labor issues that they have in order to bring their, yeah, because uh, you I know, mean, yeah, you talk about like going south to Bardstown. I'm thinking, you know, Beam, you know, or Willet or Bardstown Bourbon Company. I mean, on a weekend, good luck getting in there, you know. So, like, do you have partnerships with other restaurants or something, or like that? You're you like, you just need to call Mint Julep Tours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying if I'm on a Mint Julep tour, you know, and we're, are you able to secure them a spot at you know those restaurants, or are y'all having to go to other at the distilleries, or are you having to go to you know other restaurants, third parties? Yeah. You know. For the for the most part, I mean, we're not the ticket master of the Kentucky <laughs> Bourbon Trail by any means, but we are a large volume consumer of tickets and admissions and those types of things. So if, if you're looking for anything from just a basic tasting and tour or just a tasting or uh, some kind of uh, elevated or exclusive experience, we have a lot on each one of those shelves that you could participate in. And it uh, only comes from 15 years of working with those companies and helping them build their brands and be brand ambassadors ourselves. Yeah, you're like the travel agent, you know, when I call like to, to book my, you know, my kids, I, I want to go because the, they booked all those in advance, you know, for Is it the AAA trip ticks. Is that's that right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember those? You had to like flip through them. I, my, my grandma, I he, them, you never had, I, I was, that was a thing when we grew up, we, my grandma, she'd always get AAA trip ticks, everybody. And we would get basically these stickers that had stars everywhere. And whenever you would pay attention on a map and you'd flip it over and be like, oh, okay, we're in somewhere in Alabama. And you just go ahead and put the sticker on there and you just have a trail of stickers all the way down to, you know, your destination. Anyway, that's- It's that's, the green stamps. Yes. In the 60s, it was the green stamps. Okay, there we go. So do you, do you have any data, like like how many tours you did last year or like in 2022, like how many guests you served or this or that? or Somewhere around 60,000 people. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so it's impressive. a substantial number. Yeah. And, and so, of course, everybody in Nashville, we count two for one. So we take one person down there, we count them as two. <laughs> it's kind of, it's a little crazy. That's their drink specials, yeah, they're, too. They're, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Two for one. <laughs> woohoo. Yeah. A lot of woohoo girls of woo down girl. there. Woo girls. Oh. Woo. That's what it is. And, and so I guess the, the other thing that I, I want to really look at is, is the future of this. Because I think when I, when I look at, where bourbon tourism is going, you all are are rightly positioned. You have you've made a name for yourselves. You are the the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room. I mean, when everybody comes to town, the first thing they think of is when I need transportation. I, I think of Mitchell tours. But as a part of this, you've got to figure out well, all right, what does the future entail, and, and where is this going? So. Because you got a lot of competition too now popping up. Well, competition is one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But the other thing that I'm kind of thinking of is. Like, who are you talking to in either the whiskey business side, whether they're distillers or whether it's local Louisville government agencies that say, hey, you got to get ready. We got this other 800 room hotel that's getting built over here and they're coming for bourbon. And we've got this other thing coming for this bourbon. And, and, yeah, these, yeah, these conventions and this, this kind of stuff. And so and, and it's not like trucks can be made and wrapped in a day. So how are you sitting there and, and trying to analyze like where do, where is the data feeding from for where does the future of tourism going for the bourbon trail? Yeah. So we lead with innovation, right? So whether it's a, a partner of ours, like a maker's mark, or it's an innovation we bring to the table or an innovation that a barrel manufacturer brings to the table, that's where we lean into because that's where the growth going to be for us. Because the, the tried and true tour and tasting is, has been uh, perfected from Jack Daniels, you know, for the last 30 years. They've really done a great job. So for us, it's a lot about the distill. We've always leaned on the uh, research and development of the distilleries themselves. So they know that a personal barrel selection is a program they need to come forth with. So it's the innovation side of the industry that's going to continue to grow this market for us. Because I think so many distilleries can offer craft to mature distilleries a, a pure tasting and a tour and give an experience that's good for about 80, 85 percent of the marketplace. But then you get about 15 percent of that marketplace that wants behind the ropes or wants to experience more than what they can get in the normal public. Sure. And that's where distillery innovation comes. And so these private barrel selects, for example, they, you, you, I would have never participated in a barrel selection a year ago, much less two years ago or before COVID. So now a lot of programs are being built around these 
consumer barrel selections as well as industry barrel selections. And I think that innovation is changing quite a bit. I think the uh, adoption of the changing in liquor stores so that liquor stores can be a destination in the distillery business is a huge innovation that's forthcoming. And in Louisville, we've got Evergreen Liquors and Frankfurt Avenue that you all are aware of that can do yeah, that. They offer that great experience, you know, tasting bars and trying everything. And- at, at an extremely discounted rate of what you would get in a traditional place that would be, uh, I guess you could say, a restaurant type of model. Yeah, No question. Yeah, and it's interesting to say that because, yeah, you're not just uh, providing transportation anymore. It's just to the distillery, you can like create a niche, you know, like you said, for those exclusive experiences because you've had like these relationships that you can say, yeah, we may have these other providers in the, you know, in the bourbon tourism that can get you from point A to point B, but Mint Julep is where you're going to get that kind of elevated experience because we have those relationships built. Well, and I think just the innovation in general of, of the, uh, you know, the changing of the liquor store. Now, if you've got a barn and you've got 30 barrels of whiskey, you can sample from those, you can thief from those, you get a distiller's license, and all of a sudden you're a liquor store that's barreling your own bottle of booze, yeah. right, for the guest. And so everything from that all the way back to the traditional liquor stores, things are changing a little bit. And so it's... For us, it's about the partnerships that we've created and can continue to establish that allow us to do things behind the scenes more than others, if you will. Yeah. I, no, I say because, yeah, because consumers, you know, they really don't get that. Like, we're fortunate that we've done too many. I mean, too many. How many barrel picks? <laughs> but most <laughs> we, average consumers. We have so many barrel picks, we don't want to do the tour anymore. <laughs> but it, exactly. It, like, can it, we leave? It's the truth, <laughs> right? Like, we don't yeah. want the tour. I, no, I, no. Your fermentation takes are great, but we, we, we don't. <laughs> it's, you know, that's so right. <laughs> we hear that all day long. <laughs> We've done that. We've done the tour. We just want the tasting. We, you know, it's a flyby kind of thing. And so, what can we create as an industry, right, to give to those people? And whether it be Louisville or Bardstown or Frankfurt or where can we collectively bring those people that have done the Bourbon Trail and experienced the Bourbon Trail to new experiences and new uh, venues that they haven't they haven't enjoyed before. And provides an experience that is memorable. Yeah, totally. I remember, you know, when, when you go, we do a pick at Makers or anywhere, and the the general tour comes by and they see us like in the fishbowl. You know, doing that, and they're staring. They're like drooling. Like, like how oh, they get the? How they do that? I wish we could do that. But yeah, if they can offer that more and more, it's like yes, they can get a higher per ticket, you know, cost and a more like you said, brand ambassador experience. Because if you go into that experience, you're gonna come away like. Like, I am tied to this brand because I just did this. You know, I was able to do what a master blender or master distiller does, you know, on a day-to-day basis. You know, if you create that experience for someone. And two, that's just going to attract more people if they have that available to folks. Yeah. Well, I think there's, you know, it's a $9 billion industry. And there's been about $3 billion invested in the last 24 months in the industry. So I think we're going to see a lot of change, a lot of innovation, a lot of opportunity for companies like ours that can get people out and experience something that they wouldn't experience anywhere else in the world. And that's the uniqueness of the Kentucky Bourbon Trail is you can't experience it anywhere else in the world. Yeah, I've even noticed like, you know, some of these distilleries plans are like to have not necessarily hotels, but like conference rooms and like places where they have company outings and this and that, like really embracing this hospitality, not just to get a, you know, a tasting and a tour and a quick meal and get out. It's more of like a, you know, a retreat experience and stuff. I see that coming down the pipeline too. Yeah. Given, given any distillery, uh, distillery's uh, desires, it would be that guests would stay on property for at least a half day. Yeah. And that's what they strive for. So the the adoption of restaurants and cocktails and cocktails to go, bed and breakfasts on property, hotel stays on property, as well as a, a distillery experience, if you will. It's just top notch for any of our guests. Take your cocktail to go right back on the middle of bus. Right Hell yeah. I, I see it <laughs> when we're at Bardstown. Sometimes we have lunch and I see the, and you see the people with the bags of those to go old fashions. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> it's going to be a fun well, bus know, ride. Uh, a lot of bathroom breaks. Jack Daniels <laughs> has the barbecue hill. 
So they've got, uh, I think, around 12 Airstreams around the Barbecue Hill up on top of the property, and they bring bartenders from around the world there, and they they camp out, and they have, um, you know, a fire pit. They bring the bartenders in, two of them per Airstream. They get up on Barbecue Hill. They drink the juice, sing the songs, and the next thing you know, they're pouring Jack Daniels all over wherever they're from. <laughs> and and those are the kinds of experiences that the distilleries are creating and continue to create that'll make all of us uh, successful in the future, I believe. Yeah. yeah this is... So I got another question about the, the growth side of things. Yep. It, Ryan and I, we went, and I don't know if you were there too, but Mayor Greg Fisher's, he's kind of exited bourbonism and stuff like that yep, as well. Sure and, and he kind of, yeah, I, I thought we, I remember seeing you there. Somehow we snuck up to the front row. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Somehow we were on camera. I don't know how that ended up being. Done. Fortunately, we're, he's as old as I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so the Ryan, we had, you know, WHES and Wave 3 were all over Ryan's face. So that was, that was great to have for uh, that. But, you know, he, he said that we're still in the very beginning phases. He goes, he said that we haven't even hit what Napa is at this point. He goes, he said that basically even that people that are coming to the bourbon trail today, these are still the enthusiasts. Diehard enthusiasts. The diehard, and he's like, we haven't even hit mainstream yet. Do you, do you believe that? I, I believe we've only hit 25% of the potential. I really do. Because as the international travelers coming back, and, you know, I spent 20 years in California, so I saw Sonoma and Napa Valley before, really, they became so popular, if you will. And this was in the 80s and 90s. So I think if you look at those statistics and you look at where we're at today, there there aren't helicopter operators that are running between these distilleries. There's only one company our size, or there's only one company our size in the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, where there's about six or seven companies our size in Napa and Sonoma Valley. And so I, I think the differentiator is basically the awareness, the adoption. And uh, the, if you look at what some people say in India and China, if we only hit one or two percent of their alcohol needs through whiskey, you know, all of our consumption or all of our um, Our inventory be gone. Inventory be gone. Yeah, Max Shapiro has said that. Yeah, dumb. yeah. So Max, pretty good at that, right? So I think for here, it's just a matter of of time before we continue to. I mean, if twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three is any indicator, the spirits forward traveler and consumer of spirits and culinary is uh, off the chart. I mean, that's the way that, that I love about the Bourbon Trail is that. We literally just vacation to go drink. Like that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's that's the greatest thing about it. But that is that is the napification. That is Sonoma Valley, and bourbon is starting to make that that headway. But it, I just remember being there in that moment and listening to Mayor Greg Fisher say this as he was doing his his exit from being a mayor, and because he was very proud of creating. Well, he said he created bourbonism, but maybe he created the term. But the thing is, is he he did he did a lot for bourbon. When he was speaking, it really started hitting home for me because we have all of us three here. We've been we've seen this growth over time, and a lot of us go, "Ah, it's just the bubble. It's gonna burst. It can't last forever." And when you hear him speak, he goes, "We're just the beginning. Like this is this is just the beginning stages of where it's gonna be." And so that got me a little jacked up, thinking, <laughs> "Okay." I feel yeah, really I good about the, where this is going to go. I got all the warm and fuzzies. Yes, <laughs> yes. And so I, I, that's when, and that's why I kind of, I'll ask you, Sean, is like, so So when you hear something like like Mayor Greg Fisher talk about, like, like, even though we've seen this insane growth, even after coming post-COVID, how are you planning for your business to try to figure out, okay, like, <laughs> we got to get more Ford F three fifties or whatever it is, be able to like <laughs> yeah. with, you know with big chassis that we gotta we gotta expand our fleet. Like, how are you? Oh, think we're they, I think we're investing e. in assets. E. That's for sure. We're in, just like you're investing in in inventory with barrels. We're investing investing in vehicles, right? And I I agree with Greg in that. You know, if you take a look, we've never had any research and development budget or a small company, right? So who do you lean towards? You lean towards the people that do have a hefty research and development department, and those are Beam and Makers and Wild Turkey and Four Roses and Woodford Reserve and Brown Foreman. All of those guys have big, and they're doubling down 
on the consumer experience on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. And for us, I look at that as an indicator, not only an indicator, but a beacon to be able to determine, well, I need to continue to invest there because although I don't have the resources to come up with that answer that they do, they certainly do, right? And so I keep leaning with that, and that's proved to be successful for us so far. We've we've got uh, more vehicles, more guides, We've been blessed through COVID to be able to work with a, a guide and driver pool that is uh, of early retirement age or a professional guide uh, by profession. And so we haven't had the, the labor issues that others, others have had. And so we're adding more fleets or, or more vehicles to our fleet in order to fulfill the the weekend demand, if you will, of 2023 and 2024 as we go go through. And and quite honestly, I'll tell you in Nashville and Tennessee, they're leaning into whiskey as well. Sure. I mean, you take a look at Jack Daniels and Pennington's and Nashville Barrel Company and Nelson's Greenbrier. I mean, they, and Corsair. Well, now they have the Tennessee Trail. And, you know, and the going Tennessee to Trail and yeah. Chris moving to, you know, the Knoxville area. They, they've got a tremendous amount going on down there that uh, is, is helping us grow the whiskey awareness and the brown spirits awareness in Tennessee. And there's a big component internationally that's coming in for that as well. I love it. I mean, yeah. this is this is great to understand the growth of, of where whiskey's going. And it's, it's just been a, a great time to have you back on the show to understand exactly because it, we're – we're bullish on this as too. Is like we we want to see this continue to grow. We better be. <laughs> well, we yeah. better be. <laughs> but I mean, it's but you have so many it's, naysayers out there. They're like, oh, the bubble's gonna burst and blah 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 blah. But it, it, everything doesn't indicate that. Maybe it, it bursts in regards of secondary markets and some other kind of things. But in regards of just the growth and explosion of bourbon. Who knows? You know, I, I look back and I think of that episode we have with Susan Wall and she says, you know, everything's about a 20 year trend and we're coming up to the 20 year trend. But God, does it, is, are we still there? I, I don't know if we're there yet. I still think we have way more room to grow. And I really hope so, because Kentucky has an opportunity to be able to compete with the Napa's and the Sonoma's of the world. And we, I don't know, I'm a bigger fan of bourbon than wine. So there we go. <laughs> well, and if the 20, I, I will say if the 20 year trend started, it would have been five years ago. I mean, I don't think it's 20 years old. I think the trend only started right before COVID. And we saw our, our growth in 2017 and 18 heading into 19 as explosive. So I, I think if there is a 20 year or 25 year bell curve, if you will, we've only entered the beginning stages. Oh, I'd love to hear that. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm saying 20 to 15 was the start of the trend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope. Let's hope. Well, Sean, I want to say thank you so much again for coming on the show today. It was great to be able to have you on, especially it's been far too long since you have been on. So I'm glad you, we got your return on here. But just to understand about the growth of, of where we all were back in 2015 up until now and, and just say congratulations on the business the success and the growth of Mint Julep Tours as well. It's just one of those things when everybody comes to town, it's like, hey, you need transportation. I Mint Julep Tours. Know where to yeah. Yeah, it's like, your, your SEO is amazing. Like, it's exactly where you want to go to. And to you guys, you all have been the adopted son of so many in Louisville, including Fred and us and others that, I mean, there's no two better people to do business in this business in Louisville than you two guys. So I wish oh, you all the best you. of success with your brand, with your podcast and everything that you all have done, because it's, it's all about good people raising good people, right? That's what's so great about this industry. It it's, is. It's just a yeah. bunch of good people. <laughs> you know, we, we say we, we, we do what we love for the people that love what we do. Yeah. And that's the same thing you guys do. That's why we keep coming back. Yeah, and some days you're back. like, what the hell? <laughs> then, but it, it is about that people and the connection and community. Hey, can sure. I get some more of that rye from oh, you? Oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think sure. we can make that happen. We can do the rye with Finished and Sherry next. Yeah. We'll, we'll do the mint julep elevated experience. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take the chopper over to the that's bar. Right. The... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm in a basement here, so you guys can. Uh, this is a very intimate experience. experience. It's yeah. Very intimate. Kenny can sell this package Auth to you in no authentic. time. Authentic. Yeah. Yeah. This is authentic. That's right. That's yeah. what it is. We'll put a helipad in yeah. the, on the garage. <laughs> well, Sean, I, I mean, of course, people want to know more about you, yeah. about Mitchell Tours. How do they get in contact with you all? Mitchell Tours.com is the best way to go, and we'll take care of all of your needs and uh, 
show you the time of your life in Kentucky. Heck yeah. Especially on your second bachelor party. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> second wedding. <laughs> if you're 50 and getting married for the second time, we're the company. This is the place. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, again, make sure you go and check out Mint Julep Tours. We've talked about them all the time on the show, but make sure you follow Bourbon Pursuit wherever you get your socials, as well as make sure you leave a review, share it with a friend. But with that, cheers, everybody. We'll see you next week. Toodles.